Hi friends, thanks for joining us on today's episode of A Fresh Encounter. Now this teaching series that we have been in for the last few weeks, The Blessing of Being Yourself, is really near and dear to my heart. Because I grew up and I had a lot of challenges growing up. I grew up without my father. I grew up in an environment where I was always ridiculed because of my skin complexion. And so I grew up insecure. I grew up questioning whether or not I was good enough because I never had a father in my life to tell me that I was. But I'll tell you something that radically changed my life. And this is kind of how I stumbled into these truths that I've been sharing in this teaching series. I had a mentor that told me when I was a kid about the value of reading through the Bible every year. And I stumbled upon a story in the book of Judges and I read this story and as sure as I'm talking to you, Holy Spirit said to me, this is why we've got to deal with your identity struggles because this story was a cautionary tale about what my life could have been had I not discovered and applied the truths that I've been talking about in this teaching series. And so I want to jump into this valuable and necessary topic and it's called the danger of not being yourself. When you don't know who you are and when you're not comfortable with who you are, that's a big danger. And we're going to talk about it in this topic. Let's jump into this teaching. talk about knowing yourself today as you really are the self that God loves is not the pretty up pretend version of yourself God loves your actual self your real self we are masters of delusion when we start talking about your real self, it's, it's a challenge for us because many of us have a hard time penetrating kind of the web of self-deception that we have lived in for a very long time. We've been doing this fake self for so long that we confuse it with, with who we really are or maybe some ideal of who we wish we were. So if you're going to know yourself, as you really are, then number one, we have to acknowledge and know ourselves as sinners. Like, I mean, it doesn't take a whole bunch of self-awareness to recognize that we have some tendencies. We, we have some proclivities in us that are not as they should be. We were created in the image and likeness of God. And even though sin marred that image, damaged that image and that identity, you know what it did allow us to discover? It allowed us to discover God's unconditional love for us just as we are. When Adam and Eve sinned, God didn't stay away and say, oh wow, y'all are so messed up, I can't come to you. God jumps the fence and says, where are y'all? I'm looking for you. They were hiding and God says, come on out of hide. Who told you you were naked? And then he makes coverings out of skin for them. Even Jesus said, I didn't come for those who were well, I came for those who were sick. So if you ever want to know how God feels about you, not the fake you, not the made up you, not the pretend you, all you got to do is look at the people Jesus spent the most time around. That's why it's important for you to recognize that real spiritual transformation doesn't result from us trying to fix our own problem. Real transformation results from us turning to God in the midst of our sin, our shame, our vulnerability, our mistakes, just as we are, and receive the love and the transformation that only the Father can provide. We're going to actually talk today about the danger of not being yourself. I've shared a lot with you over these last several weeks. And what I want you to do is I want you to, to hold everything that I've been sharing with you in your heart. I want you to um, grab hold of it. And I want you to bring that with you as we go to Judges chapter 11. Because what I want you to see is the danger of what will happen if we do not walk out all of the things that we've been learning in this teaching series. This, this can't be one of those series that you leave and go home and have great Sunday dinner and maybe your family member says, what did the preacher talk about? And you can't remember. This series is one that's been intentional and it's been designed by God for us to address some real issues so that we can experience real transformation and experience the blessing of being ourselves. 
But in Judges chapter 11, you will find a man who, who leads a very tragic life because he doesn't do the things that we've been talking about these past several weeks. In Judges chapter 11 and verse number one, it says, Now Jephthah, the Gileadite, was a mighty warrior. His father was Gilead, his mother was a prostitute, and Gilead's wife also bore him sons. And when they were grown up, they drove Jephthah away, saying, You are not going to get any inheritance in our family. They said, Because you're the son of another woman. So Jephthah fled from his brothers and settled in the land of Tob, where a gang of scoundrels, one translation says adventurers, uh, Another translation says rascals gathered around him and followed him. And sometime later, when the Ammonites were fighting against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to get Jephthah from the land of Tob. Come, they said, be our commander so we can fight the Ammonites. And Jephthah said to them, now wait a minute, didn't you hate me and drive me from my father's house? Why do you come to me now when you're in trouble? And the elders of Gilead said to him, well, nevertheless, we're turning to you now. Come and fight the Ammonites and you'll be head over all of us who live in Gilead. And Jephthah answered, well, now, wait a minute. Suppose you take me back to fight the Ammonites and the Lord gives them to me. Will I really be your head? The elders of Gilead replied, the Lord is our witness. We will certainly do as you say. So Jephthah went with the elders of Gilead and the people made him head and commander over them. And he repeated all of his words before the Lord in Mitzvah. I want to talk for a moment about the danger of not being yourself. This passage in particular and this story is one that's near and dear to my heart. I, I wrote extensively about Jephthah uh, in uh, my best-selling book, The People Factor, but I, I wrote about him in the context of, of his relationships with others. I want us to come back to this story and I want us to look at his life as it relates to his inability to be okay with himself. Now, in this series, we talked about a whole bunch, and as I said a moment ago, I don't want you to forget it. I pray that this is something that you take to heart and allow God to do a work in your heart so that you live differently as a result. Because we started this series going back to Genesis 3. We examined when sin entered the world, it marred the image and the identity that God intended for Adam and Eve. This is why they put on fig leaves and they start covering up. This is the origin of the false self. And one of the things that we dealt with first is, is, is that if you're going to be yourself, you've got to take off your false self. Your false self are, are really fig leaves. A lot of the things that we, we use to cover up, you know, possessions and prestige and title, all of those things are fig leaves. And we started talking about how you've got to be able to take off your false self to be your authentic self. And then we moved in subsequent weeks into talking about how in order for you to really know yourself and love yourself, you have to know that you are deeply loved by God. This is why the Apostle Paul talks in Ephesians about all oh, that you would know how wide and how deep, you know, and how high the love of God is. You cannot adequately understand your uniqueness and how special you are in God's eyes apart from knowing how deeply loved by God you are. And then I shared with you that it is that knowledge of how deeply loved by God you are that should empower you to be able to address some of the ignored parts of ourselves. We, we have parts of ourselves that uh, sometimes, unfortunately, live in the dark. There are parts of us that we don't like to show others, hidden parts or things that we think are unattractive or proclivities and tendencies that we try to just push under the rug and push out of the sight of people. But, but God knows that those things exist. And when you push those things away, when you try to hide those things, they don't go away. In fact, they, they exert more power and control over our lives from the darkness. And so part of what we are called to do in understanding and embracing the love of God is to allow that love um, to shine light into the dark areas of our lives. And then I shared with you on last week that we also have to understand that this is why real transformation doesn't happen by us trying to make it happen on our own. We, we are changed. We are transformed 
when we come to God with all of our shame and vulnerabilities and, and, and issues that we try to hide, and it's through that that God does a work in our lives, through being vulnerable and open and honest. Because in our, in our humanness, in our fleshliness, we, we are sinners. I mean, we are flawed, we are broken, but we are deeply loved sinners. And so we've been looking at all of these things throughout this teaching series, and now we're going to come to this man who doesn't do these things that I've been teaching you and subsequently leads a very tragic life. Now, this teaching series is, is more than just head knowledge and research and studying scriptures. Um, this is one of the topics that I am deeply passionate about. One of the greatest revelations of God in my life is this notion of identity. I wrote an entire book called The I Factor on righteous identity because it, it was that important to me. I grew up um, without a father. My mother and father divorced when I was six months old. And my mom did the best that she could as a single mom. And uh, she was an incredible mother, an incredible woman of God. But because my father was absent, I, I often grew up with questions in my mind as a young black man growing up. And those questions were, was I good enough? I'm, I'm extremely passionate about fathering and about being a, a husband and a, and a father. And I often tell fathers that one of the most important things that a father is supposed to do for his children is to imprint on their heart that they are good enough. There, there are certain seasons that children will go through where they will look to their father, not their mother. They will look to their father to hear that you got what it takes. You are good enough. And that is one of the main responsibilities of a father to speak identity into the life of their children. This is part of the reason why all throughout the Old Testament, even when the patriarchs got ready to die, it was the patriarchs that blessed the children. They spoke that blessing. You are this and you are that because it was in the speaking of the blessing that identity was formed. It was in the speaking of the blessing that, that the children knew that they had what it took to live out their God-given purpose and destiny. And it is a part of a father's responsibility to speak that. Growing up without a father, I didn't have a father to speak that in my life. And I went to high school and played basketball and went on to college and, and, and did that. But, but every time I stepped on the court, every time I was in a classroom, in the back of my mind, I used to wonder, was I good enough? Because I never heard my father say it. And then to add insult to injury, I, I grew up in the uh, pre-Wesley Snipe days. Wesley Snipes was like the dawn of when Dark Skin Brothers started like being in. You, you see what I'm saying? I grew up in those Al B. Shore, Christopher Williams kind of days, you know, where the light, the light and all right brothers would like, they were the popular ones. Some of the light skinned brothers like, yeah, like I hated y'all when I was growing up. No, just, but because I was always ridiculed about being dark skinned. And so I had... I had this question in my mind of whether or not I was good enough. And then, you know, everybody used to ridicule me because I was dark skinned. And, and, and I remember one day I had, a, I had a pastor that taught me years ago about the importance of just reading through scripture. I wanted to know God. And he said, well, man, just start reading through the Bible every year. And, and it was in that moment as a, as a young man when I started reading through the Bible, wrestling with all of these issues. Am I good enough? And, and, and I really didn't love myself because people made fun of my skin complexion that I stumbled upon this story. I had never heard in Sunday school anybody teach about Jephthah. Never even knew this story existed. Never had anybody preach a message about Jephthah. Never heard it in all of the time that I grew up in church. But I stumbled upon this story and read this story and the tragedy around it. And it was as if, as sure as I'm talking to you right now, the Lord came into my bedroom and said, this is why we got to deal with the issues in your heart. Stay tuned. The danger of not being yourself is that this, number one, you don't value and appreciate the right places and the right people. The Hope Counseling Center is now seeing adults, adolescents, children, and families dealing with stress, grief, anxiety, depression, and more. The center's goal is to equip individuals and families with the tools that can be used to overcome the challenges of life. 
go to the website and schedule an appointment today. The Hope Counseling Center is here to help you see the light in the midst of the darkness. Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, there is no better place to be than logged on to TWC's online campus Facebook community. Well, what's happening, you say? Well, every week, our online campus pastor, Myron Butler, will host the Wednesday night huddle. Myron will give a live recap of Sunday's message, and you can post questions, comments, and prayer requests. So don't wait. Go to Facebook now and join the TWC online campus Facebook community page. Then get ready for our Wednesday night huddle. Are you ready for TWC's annual Fall Festival? Yes, our Fall Festival is back and will take place on Monday, October 31st from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. There will be candy, a game truck, bouncy houses, food trucks, and more. This year, we will have a special ending to our event, and you don't want to miss it. Invite your family and friends to TWC's Fall Festival. There will be fun for the entire family, and don't forget, kid-friendly costumes are welcomed. Now let's rejoin Bishop Moody for this powerful conclusion. The danger of not being yourself is that this, number one, you don't value and appreciate the right places and the right people. That, that's a danger. That's a danger. When, when, when you don't love yourself, when you don't know yourself, when, when you are not comfortable being yourself, what will end up happening is you won't value and appreciate the right places and the right people. Verse three says this. So Jephthah fled from his brothers. His brother said, you're not good enough. You're, you're illegitimate. Get out of here. You're not going to get any of dad's inheritance. So he fled from his brothers, the Bible says, and settled in a land of Tob where a group of adventurers gathered around him and followed him. Now on the surface, Tob wasn't the most palatial place to live on the surface it wasn't cancun it wasn't shangri-la this on the surface it wasn't the the rich carlton of places to live but but it was providential for him to be there tobe uh, in old testament tradition was a haven for exiles and murderers and mercenaries and thieves. One translation calls them scoundrels. Another translation calls them rascals. Another translation calls them uh, outcasts or outlaws. Tob, Tob was, was a place that, that the majority of those kinds of people in, in that day in the Old Testament, that they went and they hung out. And so people from other cities used to cast aspersions on the folk from Tob. Oh man, you from Tob? Oh my goodness. Oh. You know, but but here's the point on the surface, it, it maybe didn't look like a desirable destination, but it was a crucial place of development and destiny for Jephthah. It may not have been impressive to other people, but it was important for God's purposes for Jephthah's life. Why? Because in Tob, Jephthah got married. He found a, a woman, fell in love, got married. In Tob, Jephthah began to have a family. In Tob, Jephthah established a home. He began to raise his family. In Tob, he, he developed meaningful relationships with other people. The Bible says that there are these group of men, mercenaries, murderers, thieves, outlaws, rascals, adventurers. They, they all gathered around him and said, man, you got something. We want to follow you. We want you to lead us. In told these men became a band of brothers that, that were around him and they were positioned purposefully to provide camaraderie and support and the love that his biological siblings would not provide. See, what makes you special, what makes you unique, has nothing to do with whether or not the wrong people can see it. What, what makes you special is not contingent upon whether or not somebody that's blind as a bat can't recognize what makes you special. What makes you special is that there's a grace and a gift on you from God. And what God will do is instead of spending your time trying to make other folk that don't have the capacity to recognize it, see it. God will put you in environments where there will be other people who will recognize the gifting on you and they will be drawn to it. Do you hear what I'm trying to teach you? God allows him to go all the way to Tob to get the love, to get the acceptance, to get the camaraderie, to get the brotherhood that he couldn't get from his brothers. 
His brothers didn't see his uniqueness, but these men did. But here's the problem. He couldn't receive it. Can I tell you something? Your inability to receive love from the people who do love you because you are still hung up on the folk who don't love you. You know what it says? It says you don't know yourself and you don't love yourself. I said that too fast. I think y'all oh, y'all going to sleep over here. Let me, let me we talk over here. Your inability to receive love from the people who do love you because you are hung up on the folk who don't love you. It says you don't love yourself. It says you don't, you don't know the gifting that you are. You don't know how special and unique you are. In that unlikely place called Tob, Jephthah's life began to take root. It began to flourish. It takes off. In that place called Tob, his life is blessed. But the problem is, he doesn't value it. He doesn't value it. He doesn't appreciate it. Why? Because he is still imprisoned. By, by what the folk that don't love him think about him. He's got all of these people that love him, all of these people that are called to him and follow him and his wife loves him, his daughter adores him, but it doesn't penetrate his heart because he's still hung up on the wrong folk. He can't see that the very thing that he's hungered for the love and the acceptance of his family, the approval, the community, the sense of belonging that he didn't get with them. God says, but I got it for you right here. They've all become realities in his life through these brothers, through his wife, through his daughter, through the city. But he doesn't value it. He doesn't appreciate it because he keeps looking for love in all the wrong places. I told you, you may not be able to say amen today, but you, you may have to say out. I, I wonder how many of us are praying for the blessing and we don't even see that it is right in front of our face because we are so busy looking for love in all the wrong places. We're so busy hung up in our past or with people that don't see the giftedness, that don't value what God has placed on our lives. And it is amazing how we will commit ourselves to that which is dysfunctional. Because we don't love ourselves. Now, here's the other thing. The word told, this is the, the, the providential thing about him going to a place called told, because the word told, T-O-B in Hebrew, you know what it means? It means good. So when the Bible says that he settled in a place called Tob, it literally means he settled in a place called good. Now, a, a normal uh, Israelite would have known this. They, they know the Hebrew uh, alphabet and understand the, uh, the, the, the wording and the language. And so it should have dawned on him to wait a minute. It's called Tob, but yeah, you know, there's some, there's some unsavory people that are there. But could this be good for me? It, it would have been the equivalent of somebody saying, I'm going to live in Hawaii or L.A. or wherever you consider your favorite paradise place, a good place. That would have been kind of the equivalent of him understanding that God has sent you to Tob, meaning God has sent you to good his presence in Tob was providential it was a good place but he couldn't even embrace what this location was supposed to be for him because he couldn't let go of this ideal that man my family didn't embrace me my family didn't love me he couldn't fully settle into the good because of the unhealed wounds of his heart from the bad folk he was still holding on to. He couldn't receive the good that God was trying to minister to him with, that God was trying to heal his heart with because he kept holding on to the fact that bad people wouldn't appreciate him or recognize him or value him. And this is a big lesson for us because the lesson is this. If we don't trust the love of God for our lives, if we don't really trust how much God loves us, then we will um, misunderstand and undervalue the places where God leads us. See, it's the love of God that's connected to the leading of God. 
God even says in Jeremiah, I know the plans that I have for you. When he was talking about why the nation of Israel was going to be exiled for 70 years, he's saying that his leading is connected to his loving. He says, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and the future. He says, I love you and that's why I'm leading you this place. This is why I'm taking you through this because there's something about this that's connected to good that I have for you. But if you don't trust the love of God, then you will not trust where God leads you. And so many of us have been led to good places, but we undervalue the places and the people that God puts in our lives because we don't trust the love of God. We're still holding on. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. You got to pray my strength in the Lord. I don't know if this is the will of the Lord for me. What do you mean? He opened the door for you. It's got your name on it. Nobody else can come through this door. It's right in front of your face. But if you don't trust the love of God for you, you will misunderstand and not appreciate where he leads you. Isn't it interesting that we're so quick to label certain places as bad? Oh, I don't want to go live there. Oh, no, that's not for me. And have no idea that the very places that you think are bad on the surface may be the places where God will bless you and launch you into greater places, purpose, and prestige, isn't it, isn't it interesting how we can completely sometimes miss a move of God uh, happening in front of us because we keep longing for something. Hey family, listen, I hope that this message was an encouragement for you and maybe challenge you to be your authentic self and to live from that place because that is where the blessing of God resides for you. Now listen, I hope that if this message has touched your life in a significant way, that you would make a decision for Christ, that you would also connect with us. We are here to serve you, and there are lots of ways that we can connect. We can connect through our website, through our app. There's so much going on in person at our campuses and even in our digital community. Even if you decide that you just want to be a part of our television congregation, that's fine. But we've got lots of information that will help add value to you and your family. We've got lots of resources that can be a part of helping you to continue to grow in the image and likeness of Jesus. And can I ask you something? If this ministry has been a blessing to you, would you consider sowing a seed? We are coming to you and broadcasting by faith and our hope is to continue to reach more and more people with the hope and message of Jesus Christ. But we can't do it without you. So listen, I pray that we will connect soon, whether at one of our physical campuses or whether you will connect with us through our online campus or across the broad spectrum of other ways. And until then, I hope to see you again next week on A Fresh Encounter. Hope you enjoyed this message. For more resources, visit theworshipcentercc.org. You will also find Van Moody on all social media platforms. Again, we thank you for your support.